Dr. Cantwell, and thank you, Dr. Prabhakar, for being here. And I'm just so proud of you as a first woman to earn a PhD in applied physics from the California Institute of Technology, where you also earn a master's of science in electrical engineering. And you're here today to talk to us about good, strong science and technology policy. Uh, so I thank you for being here and I thank the chairwoman for bringing you. Uh, I also want to agree with the chairwoman. I'm not going to talk about this today, but how cyber security is so important and should be part of our national strategy. But in order to do that, we have to have access uh, for STEM education. So one of my top priorities in Congress is supporting STEM education in the STEM workforce, uh, being a woman uh, in STEM myself. And it's why I launched uh, with Senator Capito uh, the Bipartisan Senate Women in STEM Caucus. I'm proud to have introduced several STEM-related bills, including my STEM Restart Act with Senator Hyde Smith, my Rural STEM Act with Senator Wicker, and the Building Blocks of STEM Act with Senator Cap Capito, which was signed into law last Congress. However, there is still so much work to be done, particularly in breaking down barriers that stand in the way of all students, of all ages and genders and backgrounds from pursuing STEM education and STEM careers. We know that there are jobs everywhere. I said, proud that you were the first woman uh, to break that barrier there. So what role do you see uh, OSTP having promoted STEM education and workforce training, particularly for, for girls and for underrepresented communities? And if you're confirmed, will you commit to working um, me to increase our nation's investment in those education programs for girls and students of color. Senator, thank you for your question and thank you for the, the uh, enormous amount of work that you've done on this uh, vitally important topic. Uh, as, as we've been discussing today, I, I see uh, two big reasons that this wider participation in STEM is, is just critically important. We've made enormous progress since I was an undergraduate in the 70s. Uh, and when I look around and I start to see many more people of color, people from all different backgrounds, many more women, uh, I can see that we're making progress. And I, I, it's also clear we've got a long way to go and the work that you're doing I think is important in that. Uh, this is a process that accelerates, I think, as, as there are more and more role models, people who look like you when you're a kid. Uh, I think that's enormously beneficial. Um, but uh, progress here comes in many different forms. And I know that improving STEM opportunities and improving our STEM workforce is something that is uh, part of my, I've seen it as part of what many different parts of the federal R&D enterprise does. And historically, and I believe continuing, OSTP uh, plays a role in pulling all of those pieces together and helping to make sure that they really are uh, fully effective. So if I'm confirmed, this is an area that I would look forward to working with you on. Thank you, because you know what? These are good jobs. They're really creative jobs. They're jobs for everyone. But what do you need to do uh, all these cyber jobs, tech jobs, STEM jobs, whether they're education, programming, research, development, you name it, engineering, you need broadband. You need broadband. And so last year, Congress passed the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. I was proud to help write part of that bill, drafting key portions of the law, including my Middle Mile Broadband Deployment Act as part of that $40 billion broadband equity access and deployment program to invest in last mile infrastructure. And so I know I have a short time left, but I do believe by investing in these high speed networks, especially for our anchor institutions across the country, we could see greater participation in science from our rural communities. So doctor, although broadband I know isn't part of OSTP's directive, the office's mission is to maximize the benefits of science and technology for all Americans, including rural Americans, underserved communities. Uh, we, we have those all across the country. So greater broadband access really can bring us closer to realizing the agency's mission, your mission. So can you uh, um, discuss the importance of closing the, the digital divide and what role perhaps your office can play in working with the FCC, NTIA, USDA, and all of that to make this happen? Senator, I, I couldn't agree more. It's, you know, you really can't uh, get, you can't educate kids, you can't operate businesses without that broadband access. That's the world that we're in. The issues uh, are different, as I understand them, for different communities. 
Uh, and, and I think that's a reason that I can, I, I think OSTP can in fact play a very constructive role working with the different parts of government that are responsible for different parts of that. Uh, it, I think it's fundamentally enabling and it's something that I would, I would really be delighted to work with you on if I'm confirmed. Thank you. I think we just need a whole a government approach to create the foundation for success. And uh, I look forward to uh, working with you in the future. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Hicks.